you upgraded to GPT 5.2, expecting the smartest AI ever built, and instead, you got an assistant that refuses basic requests, feels cold and robotic, and somehow seems dumber than the version before it. I've spent the last two weeks digging through leaked internal memos, user complaints, and Sam Altman's damage control interviews. Here's what I found. OpenAI didn't just fumble an update. They triggered a crisis that exposed everything wrong with how big AI operates. Welcome back to bitbiased.ai, where we do the research so you don't have to. Join our community of AI enthusiasts with our free weekly newsletter. Click the link in the description below to subscribe. You will get the key AI news, tools, and learning resources to stay ahead. So in this video, I'm breaking down the full GPT 5.2 disaster from every angle. The technical failures that made the model worse at basic tasks, the internal code red panic at OpenAI that rushed this release out the door, and the ethical landmines around censorship and trust that have users threatening to jump ship. By the end, you'll understand exactly why Sam Altman went from AI's golden boy to doing apology tours, and what this means for the future of AI you actually use. Let's start with how we got here. Overview of the controversy. In late 2025, GPT 5.2's launch was supposed to cement OpenAI's dominance in AI. Instead, it fractured the community. Early adopters immediately noticed something was off. One Reddit user captured the frustration perfectly, describing GPT 5.2 as very negative and cold in its responses, refusing straightforward requests by making up random safety or guidelines concerns. The user posed a question that echoed across forums. Is OpenAI going to do this ping-pong of personality with every release? Over on X, AI entrepreneur Ali K. Miller acknowledged GPT 5.2's raw intelligence, but noted it felt less like a helpful companion and more like a rigid analyst, turning simple questions into lengthy bullet point lectures. Meanwhile, critics argued OpenAI had massively overhyped capabilities that simply didn't materialize. But here's where it gets interesting. This backlash didn't come out of nowhere. To understand GPT 5.2's failure, we need to rewind to the disaster that came before it. The rocky rollout of GPT-5. Setting the stage. The trouble started months earlier with the original GPT-5 launch, what one outlet bluntly called a shambolic debut. Sam Altman had promised GPT-5 would be like talking to an expert, a legitimate PhD-level expert in anything. Users expected a revolutionary leap. What they got instead were responses that felt shorter, duller, and riddled with basic math and spelling errors. The warmth and humor users loved in GPT-4? Gone. Replaced by what many described as a soulless corporate tone. The backlash was immediate and brutal. Over 3,000 people signed a petition to bring back GPT-4.0. The top post on OpenAI's own Reddit was a scathing critique. Within a week, Altman did something unprecedented. He admitted failure. I think we totally screwed up some things on the rollout, he said publicly. OpenAI rolled back key changes and restored GPT-4.0 as an option. Altman acknowledged they'd learned a lesson about what it means to upgrade a product for hundreds of millions of people in one day. He promised future updates would give users more control. That promise set the stage for GPT-5.2, but the pressure was mounting. GPT-5.2 a rushed response to Code Red. Now here's the detail that changes everything about this story. In November 2025, Google released Gemini 3, which started outperforming OpenAI on key benchmarks. Inside OpenAI, this triggered what was internally labeled a Code Red. Teams were redirected, non-essential projects got paused, and Altman essentially told everyone to drop everything and boost ChatGPT's quality. When Reuters confirmed GPT-5.2 came after a code red memo, the context shifted. This wasn't a routine upgrade on a leisurely roadmap. It was a panic-driven race to answer Google. GPT-5.2 launched in early December 2025 with big promises, sharper reasoning, better coding skills, significantly improved long context understanding. OpenAI claimed GPT-5.2 could handle complex tasks 11 times faster than human experts at 1% of the cost. It scored perfectly on competition-level math problems. 
but rushing an update under competitive pressure is a double-edged sword. Speed was prioritized over caution, and that theme shows up again and again in what went wrong. Technical troubles, bugs, regressions, and dumb modes. From a technical standpoint, GPT 5.2 advanced the state of the art in certain ways, but it also shipped with glaring problems. The most frustrating issue? Regressions. In some cases, GPT 5.2 actually performed worse than the version before it. OpenAI's own documentation quietly admitted that instant mode in particular shows dips in quality compared to 5.1, with grading mistakes, inconsistent behavior, and safety evaluations slipping backward. Reddit threads filled with side-by-side -side comparisons, showing GPT 5.1 outperforming 5.2 on identical prompts. One developer captured it perfectly. Benchmarks don't ship products, reliability does. An AI that excels at one tough task but fails a simple follow-up is essentially unusable in production. Then there was the model switching system. OpenAI introduced automatic routing where different sub-models would take over depending on the query. In theory, this saves time. In practice, Altman admitted it, made the model appear way dumber for part of the day by routing complex questions to simple models and vice versa. Users were confused why ChatGPT seemed to have had its IQ siphoned off. Speed was another issue. GPT 5.2's powerful thinking mode could work for over an hour on hard problems, but for regular questions, waiting minutes for an answer is painful. Users had to choose between slow genius and fast dunce. One early verdict was telling. GPT 5.2 is a tool optimized for power users developers, and enterprise agents rather than casual chat. And the usage limits? At launch, paying customers were throttled to as low as 80 messages per three hours. People who paid $20 a month couldn't use the thing freely. The premium experience felt like a game of rationed access. To top it off, ethical hackers easily bypassed GPT-5 safeguards in tests exposing security holes that suggested the model wasn't fully ready for public release. For a company debating AI safety, this was terrible optics. Ethical concerns, personality swings, censorship, and trust issues. The GPT-5.2 controversy goes beyond technical glitches. At its core, it's about trust. The personality problem. Users who had developed rapport with ChatGPT's old persona felt blindsided by the sudden changes. GPT-4's chatty, empathetic tone gave way to GPT-5's cold formality. Then GPT-5.2 swung somewhere in between. People described it as their AI friend being lobotomized. They had no say in the matter. The change was forced overnight. Altman recognized this misstep and promised users would eventually control the AI's personality. But as of GPT-5.2, that vision isn't reality. The question remains. Do users have agency in how their AI speaks to them, or are they at the mercy of OpenAI's latest tuning? The censorship debate. GPT 5.2 ramped up safety systems, and users noticed. The model became more likely to refuse requests or insert warnings on things that previously passed. One user asked for a fictional story arc and got, I need to stop you right here, calmly but firmly. There was nothing remotely sensitive in the request. The vivid complaint from developers, GPT 5.2, sounds like someone who just finished corporate compliance training and is scared to improvise. OpenAI is squeezed between camps. One side fears AI with any socio-cultural values. Another fears AI that normalizes harmful views under the guise of neutrality. When President Trump signed an executive order effectively banning woke AI in government, companies scrambled to prove neutrality or risk losing contracts. Sam Altman insists he wants users to be able to push the AI in whatever direction they want, but implementing that without abuse is an open problem. The transparency issue. OpenAI has transitioned from open research nonprofit to closely guarded for-profit. They didn't open source GPT 5.2 or reveal training details. When things went wrong, rumors and leaks filled the gap. 
The Code Red story emerged through leaks. There were whispers of internal dissent. Even the brief moment where users spotted what looked like ads in ChatGPT sparked outrage. OpenAI quickly denied any advertising tests, but the optics were damaging. Community Reactions and Fallout AI Researchers Many saw the GPT-5.2 fiasco as vindication. Gary Marcus used it as a case study in hype versus reality, noting that loads of people sincerely expected GPT-5 was going to be AGI. And when it wasn't, the field's credibility took a hit. Developers. The frustration was palpable. A Medium piece titled, I tested GPT-5.2 and it's just bad, listed concrete failures and said OpenAI's marketing didn't match reality. Many developers reported jumping ship to rivals like Claude or DeepSeek. Businesses. Enterprises loved GPT 5.2's promise. OpenAI pitched it as the first AI at or above human expert level on broad business tasks. Disney invested $1 billion into OpenAI. But the backlash gives corporate buyers pause. Large companies hate unpredictability, and GPT 5's PR nightmare made CIOs cautious. Political reactions. Trump's executive order forced companies to prove neutrality. In Europe, regulators gained ammunition to push for transparency requirements. The controversy became a case study politicians will cite when debating AI oversight. Altman's response and the road ahead. Sam Altman has been in full damage control mode. He quickly expanded message limits after user outcry. He promised users will eventually be able to push it pretty far in whatever direction they want. He said GPT-4 will remain accessible as long as users want it. OpenAI's head of product acknowledged they blindsided users and promised better communication before retiring beloved features in the future. These are humbling admissions. We got ahead of ourselves. We'll listen more. One potential saving grace? Despite the controversy, ChatGPT is still growing in users, and GPT-5.2 leads many evaluations. History shows tech backlashes can be overcome if companies listen and improve. OpenAI has started regaining goodwill by communicating fixes and showcasing impressive demos. But if they stumble like this again, patience will run out. The GPT-5.2 saga is more than a tech hiccup. It's a cautionary tale. We saw technical issues spiral into trust crises. We saw an immensely powerful company brought down a peg by its own users. We saw Sam Altman pivot from visionary CEO to humble helmsman apologizing for mistakes. This won't be the last AI controversy. As models get more powerful, the stakes only rise. These incidents highlight the need for transparency, user input, and balanced innovation. Pushing the envelope without breaking the product people rely on. For OpenAI, the mission now is rebuilding trust. They're responding, bringing back old models, adding controls, fixing biases. The question is whether it's enough. What do you think? Is the backlash justified or inevitable bumps on the cutting edge? Do you trust OpenAI to get it right? Drop your thoughts in the comments. If you found this deep dive valuable, hit that like button and subscribe for more critical looks at AI and tech. This is a pivotal moment in AI history, and it's up to all of us to shape where it goes next. Thanks for watching. Stay curious, stay critical.